Uh, one other thing I'll say about Prisma is Johannes will break an API and he does not care. And I love that. You don't know how many times the schema has changed, migration CLI has changed, but every time it's changed, it's always been for the better. So you never think like, oh, why am I doing this breaking change? It's because I'm getting all this stuff for doing it. I don't know. You guys are very tactical when it comes to that. I love that. Yeah. So, and Johannes has been um, on the board now for like, he transitioned from CEO to, to just being a board member for now uh, a little bit over a year. And I think his, his impact on the company, you know, it's, no, he's he's been less hands-on, of course, than he used to be. I think he's laid like an amazing sort of foundation for the company to to continue to evolve on. And and CERN, who's now that was the CTO and now the CEO, is, is continues to do an amazing job there. I would also add that like it's interesting this trade-off. So there was a lot of trepidation when Prisma Two was went GA, when the Prisma client went GA, right? Because there was the sense that we were maybe okay. Can we be as flexible as we used to be? Can we be as avant-garde as we used to be? And I think. It's been a journey for the company to find that out. And so like one of the things that recently happened is it became SEMVAR compliant, right? So we, we, we admitted that we, we want the sweet spot to move a little bit more in the break and change direction, but we're going to do it in a principled way with SEMVAR and do that properly. So we've mentioned it a few times now. It's come up like maybe a handful or maybe even a dozen times by now in this conversation. But for those of the people listening that don't know, what is Nexus? Where Where does it come from? How does it work? And... Why does it exist? What does it do? Yeah, so Nexus was uh, originally created by Tim Greaser, and it was picked up very early in its uh, design and implementation by Johannes at a conference who uh, saw the thing and the potential, and it was solving some of the type uh, safety problems of implementing a GraphQL API. So Nexus is a basically helps you implement the schema part of a GraphQL API in Node. Tim was basically really focused on the type safety part, and this was sort of at a time when Johannes was struggling to kind of figure out a good way to make type safe APIs with sort of the Apollo um, schema first, wasn't just Apollo, but just generally the schema first approach. And that has to this day, I think still traction and merit, but basically there was just uh, an interest in having an alternative kind of code first approach. So Nexus is a code first approach to building GraphQL APIs in Node and specifically just the schema part. So it doesn't force you down a server decision path. It doesn't prevent you from using GraphQL JS directly. Uh, you can still kind of, it really fits in to the community and the tools out there in a very kind of standard and, and standard compliant collaborative way. So it's not, it's not a framework. It's very focused as a library for the schema building part of GraphQL APIs. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Nexus as well, and I've used it a lot. And I, I think the thing that really appeals to me is the thing you just called out, which is the type safety. I write my code at every line is type checked and correct, which is very difficult to get otherwise. If you write your GraphQL schema in a random .graphql file or in, in a, even in a string in your JavaScript, which I've seen before, then it's very difficult to get that type checked correctly against your, your resolvers and to make sure that their inputs are valid and correct and what you would expect. And it's been a pleasure to work with for me. And in particular, I've really enjoyed the integration with Prisma, with the Nexus Prisma plugin. I would love to know where that came from and, and what you're working on, because I know you're working on a new version of that as well. Yeah, so we're, we're also dogfooding that in the, the Prisma data platform, and it's, it's a slow-moving library on the side, right? So it's not our kind of primary work, but we, we do consider it a kind of first-class kind of piece of work that, that does get proper product time and, and engineering time. And so, you know, Nexus being the schema building part, but Prisma being the data layer part, right? There's a clear problem, or rather, opportunity in a lot of projects where what the, what's in the data layer is, you know, somehow being repeated in the API layer, or if not repeated, certainly there's a strong relationship, and there's maybe partial repetition, and so on. And so, what Nexus Prisma aims to do is take advantage of this these two layers being uh, tightly coupled, or or even semi-coupled and allowing the developer to really speed up their velocity when it comes to saying, okay, I want, you know, I want this GraphQL object or I want this GraphQL query field or mutation field and I, I, need, I just want it to have some of the same fields that are already defined in the data layer and I want, or I want it to have some of the same relationships that are already in uh, between my models in the data layer. Uh, so Nexus Prisma, is, is that, that's, that's why it exists, right? It's to, to try to speed up the kind of boilerplate and uh, project rather than repeat yourself, be able to just sort of project in a type safe way what's in the what's in the data layer to your API layer. 